The following is a horror story narration. The story is narrated with full permission from the author, to whom owns the rights of the story. Link to the author and to the original story will be provided in the description below. This video may contain violence, scares, sexual comments with the occasional adult language used. This content is not suitable for everyone. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm the last astronaut aboard the ISS. I'm locked in my room and writing this, hoping that I'll be able to post it on whatever shitty signal I can find. I just have to wait out my tour and hope someone comes up here to collect me. Otherwise, I'm pretty much fucked, and I'll be the next one taken. It all started about a week ago, around 1900 hours. Right on dinner time, the lights went out because we were cruising above southern New Zealand at the start of winter for the southern hemisphere. There was no light at all. Pitch. Fucking. Black. I called out to my buddy who was eating dinner with me, Oleg, but got no response. Oleg, not exactly the easily scare type, so it's not like he would have frozen shock or anything. Again I call out, Oleg, can you come check comms with base? I'll go look at the electronics. To no avail. Silence. And then, as if nothing happened, lights come back on. I look around, my eyes seared by the sudden burst of bright light, only to find that I was alone in the room. I could have sworn. Hell. I knew Oleg was eating right across from me a moment ago, and looking at the door, out of the room, I saw that it was still closed, so he couldn't have left otherwise. I would have heard him. I get up to walk towards the door, filled with an anxious curiosity. What was going on? Does Base know we just lost power? As all these thoughts filled my head, the door opened, and who walks through? Oleg. What the fuck just happened? I asked him, almost in disbelief. Nothing, just a little hiccup, he said in a calm but weirdly assertive tone. I've known Oleg for a while, and something just seemed... off. I couldn't put my finger on it, at first. His posture was a little different. His voice a tad lower, but nothing major. Nothing that would set off alarm bells in my head. But then, I realized, his eyes. They were a different color. Before they were blue, now they were... black. Very dark, sure, but I still can't quite describe the color. Nevertheless, I had to have a chat with Anne, another engineer, to see what was going on. When I got to Anne, she seemed flustered, a far cry from Oleg's calmness. In fact, she shared my reaction. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea, was the only response to my questions. She was trying to work out what went wrong with the electronics, and told me to hop on comms and report what happened back to base. Houston, this is the ISS. We just had a short blackout. Over. Yes, this is Houston. We know and it's fine. Don't worry about it. What the fuck? I thought to myself. Houston and NASA should be bricking themselves in the event of a blackout. Vital science research and the whole station require power. As if there is an issue, it should be one of the top priorities. In fact, Houston had a similar reaction to Oleg. After reporting all this back to Anne, she seemed quite equally confused, both at Houston's reaction and Oleg's. She pulled me aside and said something wasn't right with Oleg. Thank God she had noticed it too. Something is not right with Oleg. I don't know what it is, but I don't think Oleg is Oleg, said Anne. I don't know. I couldn't put my finger on it for a while, but it's, it's his eyes. They're black before they were blue. 
Eventually, we stopped working. Anne and I were tired, and due to the fact that there didn't seem to be any electrical fault at all, coupled with both Oleg and Houston saying there was nothing wrong, we decided to go to sleep. Each of us has our own rooms, with a bed and our possessions we've taken up with us. Before we went to bed, I wished Anne good night. She had the night shift and made sure to steer clear of Oleg in the morning. I'd see what was up with him. Anyway, I closed my little door to my room and went to sleep. Needless to say, it took me a little longer than it usually would, but I managed. I always do. I awoke to the sounds of screams. Shooting upright, I nearly banged my head on the handrail. It's not easy to get into bed with no gravity. Getting up, I ran out of my room, still in my sleeping kit. I quickly made my way to the control room, my heart racing. I could hear Anne's screams, a high-pitched howl that sounded like something out of a horror movie. And then I saw it. Reaching the control room, fell onto the floor, the sudden shock of gravity bringing me to my sense. Looking up, I saw Anne's body, lying on the ground lifeless, her face looking up at me with dead eyes, and a small amount of clarity. I realized three things. Oleg isn't Oleg. I should really get out of here and Anne shouldn't be looking up at me. She was lying on her stomach. You can only go so fast with no gravity. But even so, I'm confident I set a new record on the way back to my room. I looked back only twice, but unfortunately, that was just enough to get a reasonably clear image of what used to be Oleg. On all fours, with his hands facing outwards, Oleg came after me. His eyes were enlarged, taking up what used to be his cheeks. His jaws were wide open. His lower teeth were right by where his neck should have ended. Despite Oleg moving faster than me, the slight head start I had meant that I got to my room with my door locked just before he bashed his body right up against it. He scratched at the door twice more, and pounded at it for five or so minutes before he stopped. That was the last thing I heard for a few sleepless days. And then there was knocking. Slight at first, then continuing into a firm knock, shocking me out of my daze. Despite being pulled back to consciousness from a half-asleep state, I was still frozen in fear. I always thought that was a cliché, but being too scared to move. But no, it's real. Your muscles lock up and despite being able to think normally, you can't move at all. Anyway, the knocking stopped almost as soon as I realized it was there. And it was replaced by a soft voice. Anne's voice. Come out now, please. You're being silly. We need to continue with the mission, said Anne. She was dead. I know she was dead. I saw her body. Her broken neck. No. No. This was not Anne at all. Even the voice was ever so slightly different. Fuck off. I don't know what you are, but you're not Anne. So just fuck off. I screamed back, filled with a sudden burst of rage that was quickly replaced with dread. She replied in a much firmer tone. Open up this door now, before I have you kicked off the mission. I didn't see a need to respond. The last thing I've heard for a few days was another scream. This time not one made out of fear, but anger. And then nothing. I'm not leaving this room. I know I'll die. Or my mind will, at least. Not that I'm not already losing it being cooped up in here. I only pray that the next crew arrives shortly, or NASA sends someone up to investigate. I've only got a short supply of sweets and other small bits of food I brought up from home while I'm here, so I won't last long. I've got a tap, so water is not an issue. If you work or know anyone who works at NASA, please send help. I'm the last astronaut aboard the ISS. And the knocking, 
just started again.